Okay, we've talked about doing inference for the slope in a regression model, and now we're going to talk about doing confidence and prediction intervals for predicted values uh, for regression. So let's think again about my rail trail example. And we had our regression equation, which was y hat equal to 99.6 plus 4.8 times the average temperature. And if we wanted to find uh, the predicted temperature for a 60 degree day, we could just plug into that equation. So we would do 99.6 plus 4.8 times 60. And that would be 99.6 plus 288, which is 387.6. So we could say it's about 388 people. So that would be our predicted value um, on a 60 degree day. But as with many things, when we do um, a point estimate, that's not necessarily going to represent what was actually going on out in the population. So we might want an interval um, to be more certain that our prediction is correct. And um, we have two possible intervals. And this is another place where I'm just going to say statisticians should not be allowed to name things. So in section 9.1 that we just did, we had um, confidence intervals for a slope. And now we're going to have two different things. So these are both different from what we did in 9.1. This is for 9.3. Um, one of the things is also called a confidence interval, but it's going to be a confidence interval for a mean y. And then we're going to have another thing called a prediction interval, which is for a particular y. Um, so this is essentially going to give us three different confidence intervals um, that you're going to need to think about for this course. So there's the one from 9.1 and then there's these two new ones from 9.3. And so what's the difference between a confidence interval and a prediction interval? So a confidence interval is going to allow us to say something about the mean and a prediction interval is going to allow us to say something about a particular observation. So with the rail trail example, we could say for a confidence interval, I'm 95% confident that the mean number of people on the rail trail on a 60 degree day will be between the low end of my interval and my, the high end of my interval. So that is um, the thing that we're talking about is the mean uh, number of people on the rail trail, right? So, and then it's on a 60 degree day. And then the prediction interval is going to allow us to say, I'm 95% confident that the number of people on the rail trail on a particular 60 degree day will be between this low and high. So then it's just the number of people, not the mean number of people, the exact number of people on a particular 60 degree day. So not just all 60 degree days, but a particular one will be between the low end of our interval and the high end of our interval. So um, one way that we could find our confidence interval, so this is for the confidence interval for a mean y, is by doing bootstrap regression lines. So take a bootstrap sample and find our regression line and plot it on there, and then take another bootstrap sample and find a regression line and plot it on there. So here I've done that 100 times, and then you can kind of see um, for perhaps for a 60 degree day, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the mean is going to be somewhere in here. It's going to be, you know, sort of centered around that number that we found. It was the 388, but there's going to be some variability there. Um, so I could say, you know, I'm 95% confident that the mean number of people uh, on the rail trail on a 60 degree day is going to be between um, this value at the top and this value at the bottom. So that's one way to do um, the confidence interval. Um, but we can also use distributional approximations. So the way that we're doing interval estimates always is the point estimate plus or minus the critical value 
times the standard error. And in this case, the thing that we're trying to predict, um, which is our point estimate, that is y hat. So again, this is different than in 9.1, uh, our point estimate was about b1, and in 9.3, our point estimate is about y hat, our predicted value. Um, but we're still gonna have a t star as our critical value from a t distribution times a standard error. And um, the standard error formulas are written here. There's one for a confidence interval and one for a prediction interval. Um, and you don't need to know these formulas. I'm just showing them to you again so that you can see that they exist. Um, and I want you to see that the difference is that for the prediction interval, we have this one plus underneath the square root. Otherwise, we have the same standard deviation of the residuals. We have the same one over n. We have the same particular x minus x bar squared. We have the same n minus 1 times the standard deviation of x squared. The only thing that's different is for the prediction interval, we have this 1 plus. And that's going to mean that the, um, the standard error for a prediction interval is always bigger than for a confidence interval. OK, so um, what do we actually do? If I'm not going to um, ask you to compute those standard errors, well, we're going to use technology. So this is, again, some R output. And it gives me the fitted value in both cases, um, which is that you know about 388 that we computed. And then it has the lower end of the interval and the upper end of the interval. And uh, you can see that there's two different intervals here. Um, so one question that I might ask you like on an exam is, which of these two intervals is the confidence interval and which is the prediction? And this top one is going to be the confidence interval. And the bottom one is the prediction interval. And we know this because this bottom interval is much wider. So if I had to interpret these for the first one, I would say I am 95% confident that the mean number of people on the rail trail on a 60 degree day will be between uh, 363 and 413 people. So that's a reasonably narrow interval, right? It's like uh, a little bit more than 50 wide. Um, but then if I'm going to do the interpretation of the other interval, I'll do it at the top. I'll say I am 95% confident that there will be between 156 and 619 people on the rail trail on a particular 60 degree day. So that's a much wider interval. That interval is hundreds of people wide. I'm not very confident. If I have to make a guess for a particular day, I'm going to make it a really wide interval. But if I get to capture the mean, we know that that's going to cover up you know, being a very low number or being a very high number. Um, so we're going to be more confident about that. So that's one thing that I would ask you on an exam is tell me, you know, which of these intervals is which. And another thing I could ask is interpret the interval for me. So the main takeaway here is that um, there's two kinds of intervals. Um, so we've got interval for a mean y, which we call a confidence interval, even though that's a really generic term. And then we have an interval for a particular y, and we call that a prediction interval. And these are both different than the confidence interval for a slope that we talked about in the previous section. Um, the prediction interval is always wider than the confidence interval. So in this picture, if you look at the red interval, that's going to be my prediction interval. 
versus the blue interval, and that's going to be my confidence interval.